All right, good evening, everybody. Um, by way of introduction, I'm Nathan Heidegger. I'm one of the co-sponsors and one of the lead mentors for Team 3176, and uh, happy to talk uh, this evening about uh, student leadership development um, as part of the First Indiana Coaches Clinic here on, on February 1st, uh, 22. So as folks uh, come in, I'll, I'll hopefully let them into the, uh, into the uh, uh, through the waiting room and we'll, we'll have a good, good recording here. So kind of, jump into uh, the agenda of what kind of I want to talk about tonight, or at least share some of our journey as Team 3176. So share just a little bit about the team to get a little bit of perspective. And then really kind of highlight, you know, the way we're kind of looking at the goal of student leadership development. Uh, take you a little bit on our journey of our evolution in the leadership structure. Um, then talk a little bit about uh, the different types of leadership that we've kind of evolved into on our team. Uh, give a little bit of details about annual selection process for what we do. Uh, hopefully, maybe there's some nuggets that other teams can can learn from. And then really want to, at the end, have an open forum for discussion sharing of understanding, you know, what kind of uh, things other teams do and, and obviously really get some cross learning there. So we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into it. So just a little bit about our team and mostly just to give perspective of the size and scope and scale of our team, uh, which kind of helps put perspective on the, the leadership structure that we've kind of evolved into. So we're, we're located out of Brownsburg High School, a northwest suburb of Indianapolis. The high school size is about 2,500 students. Um, our team size right now, we're sitting right about 40 members. That's been pretty solid for the last couple of years, uh, anywhere ranging maybe 10 to 15 mentors or whatever. So um, we did historically peak at about 65 to 70 members, uh, probably about four years ago. Um, that was uh, a quite, a, quite a crew. And so I think we've, we've kind of gotten down to about a sweet spot between 40 and 50 members. But um, so that helps give a perspective of, of how our leadership uh, structure works. Our rookie season was in 2010. So we've, we've been around at this and we've gone through a couple different evolutions of how we have our developer student leaders. And we are just an open application team. So we, we don't really have a fixed size or anything like that. So we, we tend to flex with that a little bit. So um, now kind of jump into the goal of leadership development and, and what do we do with uh, you know, challenging our students. So I really like this quote from Dean uh, on, you know we don't use kids to build robots, we use robots to build kids. Uh, I think that really sums it up, uh, you know, kind of that, you know, flipping it uh, on its head of, hey, what, what can we use this activity uh, to really develop leaders uh, within the high school uh, kids that we work with, uh, probably even maybe more than, than they realize. So I think one of the things I've really realized in the um, you know, eight to 10 years that I've been mentoring is that really there's no other high school extracurricular activity that I've seen that really has this much hands-on leadership experience or can actually do, you know, there, there's other clubs, there's other uh, performance groups, there's other varsity sports, there's other things where there is leadership structure and, and that's great. I think um, what I really see is those parallels between what the students are doing on the FRC teams and actually then what we do in industry um, in the STEM fields or even in non-STEM fields of, of really, and, and a lot of times students don't always recognize that or maybe fully appreciate that experience until later in their career. The other thing is, we I completely recognize not all leadership structures fit all teams. So, you know, you're gonna look at, well, what's your team size? What's your team focus and goals, both near-term, long-term? Uh, what's the experience level? Are you a rookie team or you've been, been around for 20, 30 years? Um, then also looking at the student diversity as far as what 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 are the students interested in trying to trying to match that up. So um, what I'll share tonight is just kind of our journey as a team and uh, we can then, you know, compare contrast of what works, what, you know, where, where we can make improvements. So our approach, we, you know, at, as our team, when we look at it, we don't really say we're a robotics club or a robotics team, you know, granted that's what we're branded as and that's what people know us as, but internally within the team, I really challenge the students to think of themselves as a small business. You know, we, we, we run uh, a, a business, we've got income, we've got expenses, it all has to balance out at the end of the day, we develop a product, we put it out onto the field and we see how it works. So. Uh, we try to always balance the technical and operations responsibilities. You know, we don't, not everyone can be on the design team. Not everyone can be a programmer. Not everyone can be on finance. So if we think about it at a business perspective, it kind of opens up a slightly different tact on that. So we actually use industry role titles and also that helps set expectations. 
Um, so we have a project manager. We don't have a club president. You know, we have a chief engineer. We have an operations manager. Um, it really kind of also then helps us to be able to introduce kind of some program management tools, fairly simple ones at, at the beginning, whether they're Gantt schedule charts. We actually run short interval control meetings at the end of every session just to make sure that we're we're you know hitting quick topics, learning how to escalate things that might might be uh, you know hurdles for the next week. Uh, so you know. Being that you're kind of matching that industry setting, it helps to bring some of those tools in. The other thing is it really engages the full team in the business aspects. Uh, we actually had a while on the team where most everyone wanted to build the robot, design the robot, because we're, hey, we're a robotics team. Um, and we found that, well, it was just up to the finance sub team to bring in all our corporate sponsorships and, and pull in that part of the income. Um, really wasn't wasn't fair. So at this point, we you know we've been able to spread that responsibility across all members, and it, it it gets that engagement, it gets that ownership, and and really helps again all coming from that small business perspective. You know, also our leadership structure has really evolved from a process from where we used to have a popular vote for a, a student leadership team. And we've moved from that many years ago to an interview selection process for a student advisory board. Uh, some slight subtleties in the, in the wording, um, you know, where a leadership team can sometimes come across as uh, a bit uh, directive, where an advisory board is really that leadership team that comes up alongside the team, gives advice, gives guidance, shares their experience, and moves the team forward. So throughout the rest of the presentation, you'll hear me talk about SAB, that's our student leadership team. So one of the other things that we really try to strive for in Team 3176 is getting the right fit of leaders. Um, so what we really do is we, we are flexible from year to year a little bit, and we really try to fit roles to the talent, not the talent to the roles. Um, so we adjust the number of uh, members of our SAB, typically seven to nine students. And we also uh, adjust the role titles and responsibilities based on the student talent really a it's a it's a unique opportunity so there are some primary roles that remain constant some of our, our main leads are project manager chief engineer operations managers and we try to embed actually some succession planning where possible where we will have uh, students as undergraduates on that leadership team you know kind of working the and in the shadow of one of those main leads to be able to step into that role the other thing we really want to strive is is to get the demographics balanced, uh, whether that's gender, whether that's other diversity aspects or perspectives, uh, business and technical sides of the team. Um, but we also wanna make sure we're balancing uh, senior, junior and sophomore demographics. Uh, obviously because we, the way the cycle runs, we don't have any freshmen on our, our team, partly that they need that experience. And even sometimes sophomores that are on there, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a stepping stone of learning leadership that first year before they can really probably execute in junior and senior year. So I want to try to get demographics. I threw out kind of a quick ratio of 331. Um, you know, while even years where we've had a really strong senior class, um, you know, to, to pack the SAB for, for all seniors is great for that year. And then obviously you can kind of flash forward and realize that now I don't have any leaders left. Um, and then other roles flex based on student interest and capability. So we might have roles that will be on SAB one year and then maybe the next year because of the, the, the balance of the student's interest and talent and leadership capability, they may roll off SAB and back and forth. So I'll give some examples of that in, uh, in coming up. The other thing really is try to focus on a group of students that can work together. There's definitely across 40 students, uh, all everyone is, is a, it's, everyone had brings their unique skills and development opportunities to the team. And you try to find that group that's really going to work together. Uh, so that is a key portion of the selection process and also then helps determine what roles are on the leadership bo uh, board. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned there, it, we've, we've seen examples where the, that team gets thrown together. Uh, everyone's been team members before. Um, you think, hey, I can get along with anybody. And you, you put them together in a leadership team. Um, and they, they, they go through those typical forming, storming, norming, performing uh, team development dynamics, which is interesting. Again, another comparison from industry to what's happening in our kind of microcosm of, of that quick year long cycle. Also, the other thing that uh, we've we've leveraged is kind of a, a racy matrix, which is responsibility, accountability, consulted, or informed. 
uh, standard kind of helps define the roles and understand what, where that accountability is, especially if we're flexing some of those roles year to year. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're cutting through that ambiguity and making sure it's clear for the students. So the other difference that I wanted to kind of highlight is um, kind of the difference between leading people, leading teams, and technical leadership. Um, a few years back, we we basically recognized, hey, there was a there was a real interest, a groundswell of of uh, desire for more leadership opportunities. Again, like I said, we had about you know seven to eight SAB roles, and we were getting upwards of twenty applications. Students were excited to be in leadership roles. They wanted it, you know, and in some ways felt bad, like, well, we've only got so many roles. Um, what we decided in the light bulb kind of clicked there, you know, we realized that just like an industry, students kind of felt, well, the only way to lead, the only way to move up in the team is to, to move in the management and become part of that SAB. So what we did that year, we actually created a formal experts role. So th these were people that were recognized as, okay, you're not on the student advisory board, but you have just as important of a role for a technical capability of the team. Uh, you know, that could be at a special and a specific, um, you know, technical robot kind of subgroup, whether it's programming or whether it's pneumatics, electrical motors, could be in the manufacturing or shop management, could be on our business operations side, either multimedia, digital or outreach. Uh, we definitely needed students that had a passion in those areas, assign them a leadership role, and then they were able to just to kind of take that and run with it without having to be linked into a, to a larger student advisory board, um, you know, that could keep growing to where half your team's on the leadership team. Um, and also we were able to decouple sub team leads from the SAB and which also opened up more opportunities. So, uh, you know, the individuals leading our programming team or leading our multimedia team or leading, you know, the electrical team, those are all individuals that are leaders, but then it, it, it's a different, type of different aspect and a different approach. And again, it doesn't balloon our student advisory board so they can stay focused on the more strategic direction for the team. And again, partly it also balances, not all students have the same time commitment, uh, but still wanna be able to lead and develop some of those softer skills uh, as being part of a first team. So our, just in general, our, our SAB obviously meets, you know, comes to all the meetings and then they also have a hour or two meeting uh, once a week, plus then a lot of online coordination and, and extra tasks that they do. So uh, again, depending, you know, we, we have a, a, a motto on our team, find your balance. So being able to find students that want to lead that matches their time commitment. This is just kind of a quick snapshot. This was from a couple of years ago, 2019 team, uh, to kind of highlight what our SAB looks like and then how the other functional leads and what those areas are. So it's sort of maybe an idea generation for, for other teams that might look at, well, what kind of roles do you have? And uh, so the, uh, the three at the top that are in kind of the darker black bold boxes, the project manager, chief engineer, operations managers, those are probably the kind of continual every year we try to have people fill those roles and essentially project manager is essentially responsible for the entire team, uh, making sure everything gets done, making sure and, and the, the broad leadership of that they're the point person for the student up external to the team uh, link in very closely with the, the lead mentors and co sponsors of the team. Uh, as far as from that coordination, our chief engineer has responsibility of all the technical aspects so you can kind of see all these all these green boxes or all these sub teams or different capability areas would kind of flow up into that person's responsibility or operations manager balances a little bit of, you know, definitely has the external like outreach and multimedia, uh, but then also integrates with design and, and shop managers from an inventory standpoint of, of understanding the finances of what do we need, what do we need to order and things like that. So we do have some roles that kind of, as I mentioned, succession planning would potentially roll right into those, uh, into those roles the next year, again, trying to uh, build that kind of apprenticeship into that. Um, and then we've, you know, there will be years where we used to always have the, the programming lead used to always be a, a standard member of SAB um, or, or the, the multimedia expert used to always be, you know, an SAB, depending on the strengths and the talents and the interests of those students and which group would work better um, together cohesively, we are able to kind of flip in and out of kind of this purple box boundary. So moving on to just wanted to kind of step through our annual selection process. So we, we open up applications for SAB in basically early April. So about the time 
uh, when we're just about ro rolling out of uh, out of uh, competition season, you know, kind of in that uh, mid-April, late April time frame, uh, we open it up to anyone on the team. It used to be as easy as just um, of signing up for. Uh, you know, if you were interested, just put your name on a list. Well, that's a uh, we realized that's a fairly low bar, and we had about half the team wanting to uh, to uh, to take on a an SAB role or a leadership role. So by just setting that bar to say, hey, let's take some accountability, just fill out a short essay, um, and it also helps us understand the student's perspective. You know, so real short three question essay, um, and these are pretty generic questions. I think any team could probably pick up or tweak them and probably even improve them. Um, you know, because we're we're flexible on the types of roles, we really encourage the students to say, well, what leadership role do you want to apply for? And if you want to be creative and invent one, please write that down. And then we also try to focus on the in, their individual contributions. I mean, obviously being part of a team is important, but to be a leader, we want to make sure that they feel like, yeah, I'm proud of what I've done. I've made some contributions and it gives them something to kind of build their leadership experience on. And then we also realize we're tied into the much broader global first organization. So I'm always interested in hearing what each student's perspective of what does the broader first mission mean to you, whether it's out, you know, whether it's internal, out, you know, within our team, whether it's how we outreach to the to the local schools and community or, or broader with comp competitions and interacting with other teams. So those those essays, essays come in probably, you know, by the by the end of April and then early in, in May, we will set up an interview process. Uh, so anyone that submits an essay gets an interview. Um, so there's no, there's no culling down there or anything like that. The, uh, the interviews are pretty simple, about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, they're structured so everyone gets asked the same questions. In the past couple of years, we've actually sent out a little homework of, of looking at some of the really good kind of student leadership videos that are out there from some of the Hall of Fame teams and then have the students pull one or two ideas that they've learned from that of how they could maybe apply that to our team. So it kind of gets them already thinking before coming into the interview about student leadership and what does it mean to, to be part of that leadership team. Um, so we, we do actually include the graduating senior members of SAB on the interview panel. So they get to help ask the questions. We've had students even say, I've waited three years to get on the other side of the table. So that's it's exciting to have them part of the panel, part of the discussion. We take their feedback in. However, they're not part of that final selection decision. Um, that helps keep some kind of, um, you know, the peer pressure off and, well, I've got a friend that's uh, interviewing and, and stuff like that. But they, they honestly are open and transparent. They take that responsibility really seriously. They, they, they realize how hard of a job it is and what proud, you know, pride they have in the team and want to really look for the team's success. So we've had some really great, great conversations. Um, and also, it's, it's a really neat experience for the students that are interviewing, especially maybe a freshman who's, uh, you know, one year on the team and thinks, hey, I, I, I want to try some leadership aspects. So a lot of times it's the first interview that many students have ever experienced. Uh, so it really, it, it almost hones those skills from a student of being able to communicate, being able to present something you're proud about, be able to answer questions. And it really almost sets them up for that first job interview or the college scholarship interview that, that's in their future. So we find that to be kind of a, a, a really fun process to go through at least on, from our side of the table. Um, at the year end picnic, usually about the end of May, we announced the new SAB leadership. Um, it's kind of a good handover time as the seniors are just graduating and, and we move on to that next year, looking forward. Then we use the summer to kind of have um, SAB team, because they kind of form, they transfer knowledge from the, from the past SAB, strategize for kind of the upcoming off season. And, um, and then, you know, we kind of look at, well, what are the, what, what, what are the strategic things? We just recently moved uh, due to high school construction and we moved from the high school to the middle school for three seasons and then back. So th there were some different strategic things we had to work through over the summer. Um, and we really have challenged the SAB over the last several years to develop the off-season curriculum. What's, what's the syllabus look like? What, what do we wanna teach? Um, it's really a low risk leadership challenge that you know, every year and they, they knock it out of the park. They come up with an education plan. They usually build on the previous one you know, and, and it allows them to be creative, allows them to drive and see what do they think the, the team needs. Obviously, as we get into the build season, um, you know, there's a lot of supportive mentors. And by that point, they've kind of formed into their leadership team and, uh, and we're, we're clicking on all cylinders by that point. So just uh, 
getting close to the close to the end here did want to obviously highlight that there, there's some great resources out there for first teams uh, these were just a couple that i came across from the compass alliance one on just a, effective leadership practices and that really covers not just student leadership but mentor leadership and and leading the entire team and then another one on how to organize a team kind of start delves into the different aspects and one of those happens to be student leadership so this then is a quick summary of some of the things that I've been able to share this evening. Again, um, I, you know, I really see this as a unique opportunity for hands-on leadership. Um, you know, we always say that students, you know, can go pro on this compared with other varsity sports, but students don't go pro as club presidents or club vice presidents, but they could very well go pro as a chief engineer or as a project manager, or as an operations manager. So understanding those roles, those expectations really kind of gets them a head start on thinking about how is it to work within a business and interact and communicate within teams? The other key thing is I try to emphasize is we do are flexible and we do fit the roles to the talent, not the talent to the roles. With that flexibility in the structure though, make sure we do address the ambiguity that can cause. There's been a couple of times when we've flipped things around so much that you know, over the summer months as the SAB is forming, they're not sure, well, who's responsible for that task or this task? So we've tried to develop a specific kind of job description and a, an accountability matrix just to look through, make sure everything's covered and there's clear lines of accountability. And then just leaders come in different flavors. There's people leaders, there's sub-team leads, technical experts. And the key thing is really to have those opportunities for students that want to step up and lead. And at the same time, kind of help provide a structure and a framework to understand what the interactions are. And again, the responsibilities. Um, it's, it's, it's great to have that many students that want to take a little niche. And we've been able to find, you know, people that are passionate about a subject. Hey, you're a technical expert, just go run with it. That's great. Or, hey, I'm a sub team lead. I really am passionate about this specific area, whether it's, you know, electrical or programming or multimedia and, and but, but maybe I don't have the time commitment for an SAB or I just don't have that desire. Um, that's great. Then it gives them an opportunity to lead. Then obviously then we ask a lot out of our, our, you know, seven to nine SAB members that are really responsible for leading the entire team. And um, actually as a, as a lead mentor, I've noticed, over the last decade, being able to offload more of that leadership, that responsibility, the strategy, the ideas to the SAB, it really raises their ownership on the team. And I, I think it's rewarding, at least that's what they tell me. And then the last thing just wanted to highlight is just have a clear transparent selection process where everyone can participate. Like I said, we've moved from kind of that popular vote early on to uh, to much more of a transparent, open for everybody interview process where we we understand and you know we've we've shared kind of the selection criteria and what we're trying to do with the with the team members. And I think it's great that you know of those large application number of applications we get in, we can be able to not only just fill a great student advisory board, but then also look for some of those technical experts and sub team leads. So again, this one to kind of transition to an open forum. This is really just our team's approach and some lessons we've learned along the journey, recognizing it probably doesn't match every size and culture of all the teams that are out there. So find one that works for you, uh, but then at the same time, don't be afraid to change it, you know, and those could be little tweaks or it could be kind of a wholesale change around, depending again on what, what the team's goals are, what the students' interests are and, uh, and the, the makeup of the overall team and, and the, the school that you guys are everyone's within. So with that, I want to thank uh, First Indiana for hosting these coaches clinics and having an opportunity to share a little bit about uh, about what we do in Team 3176 in Brownsburg. So thank you. I'll open it up for any, uh, any Q&A if anyone has any uh, questions out there. Yeah, I have I have one. We we have a very similar setup. We call it Stratex in okay. our in our team. Um, we have six mentors and five students on the board on, on our leadership group. Um, and we um, at the end of each season before we start the next week that we have a vote. It's open vote for you know people nominate other kids and other mentors. And then we have an open vote between the, the team members and that's how we decide who's on there. How long did it take for your students to really catch on to the leadership stuff? How many years did that catch on before they actually took real good heart into it? That's a great question, Scott, thanks. And 
And uh, that actually, actually brought up another point of this, the whole mentor student leadership interaction, because it sounds like what you've got there is that really good board of making sure you've got, because we found that if there's a disconnect between what mentor expectations and student leader expectations, that can that can drive some frustrations near term and schedule issues. So, um, but yeah, back to your question, as far as, you know, thinking about, it, it probably took about two or three years just to kind of get that in there again. We the the structure of the of the leadership team, you know, some of those primary roles and the and the size of the leadership team really didn't change that much. It was more just the selection process, and I think it could have been also we, we've had a couple uh, classes, kind of, you know, I think every team goes through where you've got a little bit of a wave of different. One year might be a large class local, and uh, I think you know there was one or two teams that, years that have really kind of set a great example. You know, and so once you have one of those strong classes kind of come through, then by the time they're seniors, you know, everyone on the team has kind of shifted to that culture. So, uh, you know, in, you know, I guess using that small business perspective, you know, my, my workforce turns over every four years. So, um, it, but so probably about after two or three years, you kind of have embedded that uh, philosophy in. Okay. Because we've, uh, we, we do the same thing. We treat, treat our team like a business also. We have pretty much about the same divisions. Um, and outside of the Strat X, we have separate, you know, mentors take sep different positions, different teams. And then we also have a, a student leader that works with that mentor e in each of those organizations. So, um, but they don't have to be, they can be a team lead in one of those divisions or one of those teams, but they don't have to necessarily be on Strat X to, to be that leader too. So kind of spread that out over, you know, different things. So that's, that, that's it's very great, similar yeah. to ours, but it's very similar to what we do. But, you know, in this case, you guys have the application process where we vote on them every year. So, yeah. It, and honestly, yeah, as, as I was pulling these slides together, I think, you know, I'm probably talking to the preaching to the choir here a little bit, as far as there's probably you know, each team does probably about 80% of it. And then around the edges, we might might flex a, a little bit here or there, depending on our team culture. So um, I didn't think probably there'd be any super, super new here, but it's always just an opportunity that I think it's a, um, it's probably an unsung type of uh, benefit that students get coming through this. Uh, you know, it's easy to focus on the robot and the competitions. And, yeah. and uh, I honestly, I feel like we probably develop better leaders than we develop robots, but I guess, Thinking back on that, that's probably the right way. If someone were to ask me which way, I'd rather rather have it. Yeah, we when we first started the fifteen oh one team, uh, there was two or three of us that was on the five thirty five team that was affiliated with Huntington North High School. But then that team went away. We wait had to wait a couple of years, and then we started fifteen oh one. Then in um, two thousand five, but we struggled with the leadership stuff for a few years. And then we finally come up with this concept about 2010 and it's worked really well. We've done better as a team through that whole thing. And we've, you know, developed better leaders through that, that period of time of doing this too. So you need that structure. That's the, you know, one of the things you can give to a new team when they're coming out is you got to have structure or else you won't succeed in in the competition and you won't succeed as a team when you're students either. So. Yeah, no, it's a great comment, Scott. And actually we, our team kind of went through the same, you know, we, we kind of instituted some of the SAB and the interview process probably about oh, probably six or seven years ago. So, you know, we probably, again, about five years into it, we realized maybe there's a little bit more structure, a little bit, I, I don't want to say formality to it, but just setting those expectations and, and making it transparent. Yep. Thank you. No problem, Scott. Thanks. And th so, I want to. Any other questions? Otherwise, I really appreciate uh, everyone's time this evening. And like I said, I'm going to close out the recording here and uh, make it a, that way. It'll be available for uh, for future for future use. So, thanks again, and uh, have a great evening.